Hi. Hi. What's up, everybody? It's Aaron and Nicole. This is Dude That's Fucked Up. Welcome, you guys. How you doing? Oh, my God. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Chilling. Mm. How are you? Good. Are you wearing a onesie? I am. I'm wearing a <gasps> jumpsuit. Cute. Oh, yeah. It's so Top Gun. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it is very Top Gun, actually. I didn't even yeah, I love it. mean for that, but it's real cute. It's like very cozy, comfy. Oh, love it. Love. Yeah. Such a vibe. Okay. <laughs> I do want to plug because I meant to do this last week and I forgot. Um, okay. I was on uh the queer xp again my friend's podcast all about uh like queer nerd culture but i get to come on as an ally and i Mm -hmm. get to play tabletop role-playing games that's my place in the um the in the queer xp in the queer xp yeah (laughs) Yeah. in the i was gonna say like the potiverse or whatever you know Mm -hmm. um so I just did. OK, I played with Bombay from RuPaul's Drag Race Canada. We, oh, my God. She came on the podcast and we played a game together and it was so fucking fun. And she played herself. But as a superhero, it's a game Ugh. called Masks. And you're all like teen superheroes that like are learning to wield your powers, you know? Oh, fun. And I was a, a She-Hulk like character called Thunder Thighs. <laughs> and boy, oh, boy, was it fun. And the second half gets real wild. I have some very fun moments. Um, oh, my God. So go listen to it. It's uh, on Twitter. It's at the queer XP, like the letters XP. And both there. It's a two parter. So okay. both parts are out. But yeah, Bombay was so fun and oh so funny. God. And she was like, you know, just it was just like a celebrity. And I, but I like played it really cool. You know, I wasn't yeah, like, yeah. oh, my God. You know, but inside I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> You made it, babe. I made it. I played a game with a drag queen, and it was fun. And Ugh. we all won, I guess. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. Oh, I can't wait to listen. That's so exciting. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, good. Yeah. It'll be fun. So cool. Uh, what's going on with you? Oh, uh, you know, same old shit, different day. Mm. Um, I don't know. Nothing. Nothing crazy is happening. Just uh, trying to make it through the week, you know? <laughs> So yeah, it's chill. All right. Um, but let's just, I you know what I'm dying to talk about this topic. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's good. It's wild. Um it's okay. wild in a different way from last week's episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but still German. Yeah, also still German. Yeah. 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 <laughs> da, darling. Um so this topic was suggested to me by DJ who mm-hmm. I think I don't know if he like heard it on a podcast or read an article about it mm-hmm. but he like we were like getting ready for bed the other night and he's like telling me this story and I'm like shut the fuck up this is not real he's like no I swear to god this like is a real person this really happened yeah and I was like no fucking way he's like it's a perfect perfect topic for your for the podcast so I was yes. like all right and I, when I tell you my jaw was on the floor just hearing the general gist of the story I, it's so wild and scary and unbelievable but it's also inspiring and amazing yes um, honestly like i'm in awe um this is the story of juliana i want to say juliana but it, that's like there's it's like, like a it, well it's julian kopke yeah it, there's a german kopke. pronounced pronunciation but oh okay yeah yeah it's julian kopek yeah. Kopek. Kopeki? Kopka. 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 That's her maiden name. That's like uh, what sh- she was known as when this thing happened to her. Um, yeah. She's the lone survivor of a plane crash in the Amazon rainforest in 1971. Uh, and this happened to her when she was only 17 years old. Oh. <laughs> my god so we are going to talk about her and this whole harrowing event yeah because not only did she survive a plane crash she crashed in the amazonian rainforest and made it out of the rainforest alive so just that like forget the fact that she fucking survived a plane crash okay that's what i'm saying that's already wild but 
a, a few other people did as well. But the fact that she was able to like survive the Amazon. Yeah. That's. I couldn't. I wouldn't. I shan't. No. I won't. <laughs> it, I would not. <laughs> you would not. You could not. You should not. Um, I shan't. You shan't. Uh, okay. So what? first of all, what you need, just like a little background about this incredible person. Mm-hmm. Jul- Juliana, Julian, she was uh, not a typical teen back in nineteen in the 1970s. Um, she was raised, uh, she's the daughter of German zoologists Maria and Hans Wilhelm Kopeck. Um, yeah. Kopka. She, Kopka. I'm like not good with pronunciation of foreign names. It's sorry. only because I heard it. Kopka. Yeah. yeah. I heard it's, it. Yeah. yeah, I know. Um, she's, she's, so she's um, born in Lima, Peru. So she's um, Peruvian German. Um, yeah. And she was born in Peru in 1954. And her parents raised her in this very like sciencey and highly educated environment while they worked at the Natural History Museum in Lima. Um, you know, they're biologists, zoologists. So they just like she has this incredible upbringing in their household. Um, and in 1968, when she was 14 years old, her parents we're like we need to go start this um we need to like establish an outpost a, a research center essentially um so they they moved they took her out of the out of school when she was 14 years old to move to the middle of the amazonian rainforest and establish the pinguana research center in the amazonian rainforest like mm. in the middle of nowhere yeah um and in the in the rainforest of Peru, they established this place to study the flora and fauna, to create a space for conservation and uh, education about all of the th- living things in the rainforest that had not even been discovered yet. They're you know very ahead of their time, um, and also trying to be as like not non-invasive as possible to their natural surroundings so they're like the ogs Mm. um and while they're at the research center like living in the jungle she had to learn survival skills and become knowledgeable and comfortable with the flora and fauna of the rainforest so she's already like has this kind of background where yeah she's you know living amongst the the wild the wild jungle, basically. She knows. She doesn't give a, fu- doesn't give like, a fuck about bugs. Doesn't give a fuck yeah, about snakes. No. no, I was gonna say she knows how to identify a snake, a bug. She knows. <laughs> she she can look at a bug and go, "That's a bug," mm. and we're all so proud of her. And this kit would come in handy. <laughs> oh, it would come in very handy because, <laughs> I mean, when I tell you, like, there's shit in the rainforest that oh, oh. you don't even want to know about there's and you might not know about and nobody might know about like that's the fucking shit it's like did you know there's a six foot spider that lives in the amazon or whatever and people are like no no one knows that but you know but we found the, it the cupcake the cupcakes did they yeah the cupcakes they're, they're like mm, i feel like they're yeah. like he that spider's cool like he he's chill yeah, yeah. but these fucking stingrays you want to watch out for mm. <laughs> <laughs> So, of course, she's, like, learning all the survival skills um, and, you know, knows how to identify anything and everything. Um, Mm -hmm. However, uh, she's 14 years old and the Lima school system was like, hey, uh, we don't care how smart you guys are and how much cool shit y'all are teaching your kid out in the fucking rainforest. (laughs) You need to get her ass back here to finish school. (laughs) And so they're like, yeah, all right, whatever. (laughs) <laughs> and her and her mom go back to Lima and she had to, you know, spend the next couple of years finishing up school. So by the time she's ready to graduate, her and her mom were like ready to go back uh, mm-hmm. to the outpost, to the to the research center to be with her dad. Um, but she really wanted to attend her graduation ceremony and go to her school prom like a normal teen. So um 
Except hurt. not normal because the prom was like two days after graduation and like two days before Christmas. What? I don't know what they're doing. Well, it's in the it's in the southern hemisphere, so I feel like it's like summertime. Or, you know, oh, okay. like it's like a different like. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, the the temperatures. <laughs> yeah, the the temps, the 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 times, everything is yeah. different. Um, the, seas- the saisons. The saisons. I think I don't know. I I was confused about the graduation ceremony and the prom. I think they're on the same day. I think they just like no, that's two birds not normal. Stone. No, yeah, that's insanity. Well, okay. that's not what we're used to. Okay, also right, it was the seventies, and maybe her class was like. 30 people or I was something. gonna say it was like three people yeah it was just like a bunch of science nerds and then they're like also the prom is at the graduation so just like wear your dress prom under dress your robe, underneath your robe yeah and we're assigning <laughs> dates yeah because otherwise no one's gonna ask the boys because they're big time nerds <laughs> uh well it was like a I want to say it was like a expat school so oh oh yeah 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 okay. it was it was it was it was just like a bunch of yeah yeah whatever um okay. okay so her dad and mom were like we want to leave like on the 19th or 20th of December and she's like no I want to stay for my my all my shit I want to like do this the thing. fun part yeah. yeah I just like had to like leave the rainforest and like go do fucking dumb school for a couple years yeah I wanna, like do the fun stuff and so yeah. She's like, let's stay till I'm done and then like leave on Christmas Eve. And her mom agreed. Um, and it was a shit show because we all know that Christmas Eve, as in terms of travel, is mm-hmm. probably one of the worst days to travel. Yeah. So the airport in Lima, Peru was a goddamn nightmare. <laughs> like people are trying to get on flights. There's only one flight left out of the airport. And the reason it was the worst or the reason that it was the only flight was because it was the worst fucking airline mm-hmm. flying out. Yeah. And nobody wanted to get on the flight. <laughs> no. Because they had a real bad track record, which we'll talk about later. OK, yeah. So the her their dad, her dad was like, please don't get on this shit ass airline. This is yeah. a they're they're a terrible airline. And her mom's like insisted that they get on it. And he's like, please don't. And the reason was because they had had two crashes in like the span of like not even 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Two major crashes. And they just had a reputation for being garbage. Yeah. So bad. (laughs) Like two like massive crashes. And okay, like and one of them was in 1970 the year before. Yeah. And, and like maybe you would like argue like, OK, well, like I'm sure American Airlines, you know, if you look at all their flights, they have crashes and it's like, sure. But they're like an international huge brand. This was like a rinky dink, like regional airline. So like, yeah, the, the numbers aren't there for them. The ratio they're getting ratioed essentially yeah. oh. by their horrific track record. So they were bad. It was bad. Yeah. Their their reputation was super bad. But yeah. Her her mom was like, no, like, I want to be with your dad on Christmas Day. So yeah. they get on this flight. They take off. The flight to- is totally fine and normal for the first half hour. Like, clear skies, not a mm-hmm. bump. Getting yep. served, you know, the drink service is happening. They're getting served sandwiches. <laughs> and then all of a sudden... She, according to her, she looks out the window and it's just suddenly pitch black. Like they're flying into a storm. Basically, their their flight path has sent them directly into a massive thunderstorm. Oh, my God. Which you can't control. You can't control. But nowadays, like there are really sophisticated like yeah. ways. Then now you can't control it. They're like, go around it. You're all yeah. okay. <laughs> They put a little sky cone next to it, a flare, a couple flares, so you like go around. Yeah, they're like, there's a big fucking dip in the road up here. <laughs> go, go, take this detour. <laughs> Literally, they'll like, they'll, they'll get like, you know, calls yeah. from the flight towers and be like, you're gonna hit some turbulence up here. Yeah. So mm-hmm. here's your, here's your updated route. Yeah. Um, they did not have that ability back in 1971. Um, I mean, they had, they checked the weather and stuff, but. This was a big ass storm that they were just flying straight into. Oh my god! Um, 
And it was real bad, as you might expect. They experienced severe turbulence for several minutes. Um, she said, according to Julian, the um, so it's Christmas Eve, so everybody has their presents and stuff in the overhead bins, and it's so violent such violent turbulence that the bins are popping open yeah. and people's like Christmas presents are flying. Oh like my there's God. just like shit there's just, flying. Yeah. Debris everywhere. Yeah. And people are like screaming and crying and it's yeah terrifying. Um, and then she says all of a sudden there's, there's a huge bright flash of lightning and she, she says she sees it hit the engine mm-hmm. and they just, it, everything just the engines are howling and they're plummeting to the ground like she's like it felt like we're in a 90 degree yeah dive yeah no a complete nose dive complete nose dive and the plane just literally starts breaking apart in midair like oh my god disintegrating oh my god <laughs> did the wing and the engine <sighs> caught on fire right i like i I don't know. Like she said, she just saw the flash of like blinding light, and then okay. like I think they—that's what they found out eventually. What, yeah. is what happened? Maybe it's like the lightning hit the fucking engine and it caught on fire. One of yeah. them is like fucking caught on fire. And this is like a prop prop plane, mm-hmm. but it it's like a commercial plane. Um, it's yeah. it's a it's a model. I think it's like a Lockheed Martin. Um, Electra, I think is what it was called. Mm-hmm. And they don't they. Stop making them. Um, Thank God. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, you know, it's like a prop engine, but it holds yeah. like 90 something passengers. So yeah, it's like yeah. a decent sized plane. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like, it, and it's like three and three, like three rows, three rows, three rows. Yeah. That's um, big. It's big. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people on this plane. Um, and it's like a full, a full flight because everybody was trying to like get every where last they wanted seat. to go yeah. for, for Christmas Eve. Yep. So fucking planes breaking apart midair um she's julian somehow stays strapped to her seat um as this is as the plane's just like you know exploding around her and she fell ten thousand feet aka two miles through the air into the canopy of the rainforest below oh my god (sighs) Um, can you like fucking imagine strapped to this row of seats? Yeah, she's strapped to a row of seats, three seats. She said her mom. She's sitting at by the window. Her mom's in the middle, and then there's like a, a Peruvian man sitting in the aisle seat. And she, it, it it's like all of a sudden she's sitting there, and then the next thing she knows, she's spiraling through the air. And she said she could see the canopy of the like she's like could see everything spinning yeah and she could see the canopy of the rainforest below her and then she like blacks out oh um, my god like I she love- rem- she remembers that but yeah i don't right. know yeah she's had like memories of she doesn't remember the whole part and also mm-hmm. yeah she was blacking out and stuff like she lost consciousness multiple times but also like- could just be like a protective strategy of yeah. your own brain trying yeah. to of you know, experiencing severe trauma. Well, I think the velocity that she started spinning would, you know, you watch those like um, slingshot ride mm-hmm, uh, videos mm-hmm. and the people are like, <laughs> and yeah, they're just like out. It's <laughs> like, really. dude, this is way more violent than that. So your brain. Yeah, it's like shutting down for a, a couple of minutes. Yeah. But she had such a good quote uh, in uh, about like how she ended up like uh, suddenly she was just like not in the plane anymore but still in her seat she said it wasn't so much that i had left the plane but the plane had left me <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. the plane as it's just disintegrating and like shit's ha- like suddenly she's just still in the seat she was in right in the row she's in and everything else is like not around her <sighs> it's wild I just keep like picturing like an action movie where I'm like, this is so dumb. Yeah. But this shit actually happened to her. Yeah. You know, like I can't I can't imagine the violence of these moments. Like I know. I know. Also, okay, I was very curious. This is very morbid. But like when when was her mom not there? Like, yeah. Where and when, you know? I know. I know. Cause like it's she like, was probably wearing her seatbelt too. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm sure everybody was, but like, you know, yeah. at some point her mom got like sucked out. Yeah. Out of her seat. And so did the the man, the, man. the Peruvian man sitting on the yeah. aisle. Because oh my God. when she came to, she was deep in the jungle, like she had fallen through the trees. Yeah. And she was like laying under the row of intact seats, at the row of seats that she had stayed tra- strapped to. Dude. Um, and... The way uh, she describes it is that because and we'll talk about like how this how she survived, um, like how she fell from that high of an altitude and like didn't fucking disintegrate in the air like the plane yeah. did. Yeah. 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 Um, basically, what what had happened is that because she the, the row of seats stayed intact, you know, like the. um like the leaves that fall out of the tree that do like that spinny oh, thing, like yeah. the little seed pods, or like those little fairy princess dolls that you yeah. put them on the little um, thing and you pull the cord and they spin yeah. up and then like their dress is like two flaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it kind of like spun because she was spinning. She remembers spinning so much. That's kind of what they think happened is that the like centrifugal kind of force of that like kept her from falling like a rock you know yeah yeah um and then also she was falling through a thunderstorm yeah so (laughs) like literal eye of the storm literally like in this violent ass thunderstorm that had just taken out the plane the updrafts from that kept her velocity from becoming too much as she was falling um it's a miracle honestly it's so it's just like how like I understand how but like the the number of coincidences that had to happen for her to land on the ground not safely Mm -hmm. but as close to safely as you could from that high up is astonishing it's it's unbelievable um so she she wakes up on the floor of the rainforest under these under the row of intact seats yeah and she has some pretty gnarly gnarly but also relatively minor injuries for surviving a fucking plane crash oh my god <laughs> she had like a bunch of chip cuts. nail oh okay yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> she's like missing a shoe her yeah, dress is torn that's it she yeah. stubbed her toe she has she's missing a part of her pinky nail and that's mm. it no 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 it was mm-hmm. way worse no, it was way worse than that. She had some like super deep cuts on her legs and arm, especially. There's one on her arm that we'll talk more about later. No, uh, we don't have to. It's a little bit of a foreshadowing a for how nasty it is. Um, it's a nasty. She broke her collarbone. She said she could feel the bones like separated, but they weren't poking out of the skin. So she was like, oh, it's fine. Um, oh. <laughs> I, I mean, she's in full on shock. Uh, yeah, she had some slight like brain damage, obviously, because like oh. she's in a full like, uh, what's it called? Um, shock. Huge state. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, she she was a uh, she was had a major concussion. Um, yeah. There we go. And both of her eyes were swollen. One was swollen so bad she couldn't see out of it. Um, yeah. yeah. So she's just like. I, she's fucked up like she's yeah, all so battered true. and bruised but, but c- could have been way alive worse. Mm-hmm. yeah alive and could have been so much worse uh, yeah like like what if she had a whole ass broken leg or something like she was able to walk and stuff you know yeah that's wild the the fact that people don't get up and walk away from some car accidents and this woman fell this girl she was 17, 17 years old yeah uh-huh. fell from the motherfucking sky and then literally walked away and not just walked away yeah because she's in the middle of the fucking rainforest true yeah it's not like she just walked over to like a arby's and was like can you help me yeah she's like hi i like <laughs> fell out of a plane yeah. <laughs> oh. no she's in the middle of the rainforest like surrounded by nothing but jungle. Yeah. Um, there is no civilization for miles and miles around. She's in the deepest part of the rainforest. She's uh, she's realizing like, oh my god, I'm hurt. Her her mom is gone. She's like looks around. She's like, where's my mom? Yeah. Where are all the people that were in this 
fucking plane with me. Yep. She's alone. She's in the deepest part of the jungle and she's essentially very fucked. Yeah. Um, but she did find a fruit cake. She did find a fruit cake, but it was like caked with mud and yeah. she's like, I tried to eat it, but it was disgusting. disgusting. <laughs> uh, if I would have known that I would have <laughs> what I knew later, I would have tried to just eat the whole thing. Yeah. Um, but no, she's like, she's like very fucked. Um, yeah, yeah. So she's, she uh, is, but you know what? She's a bad bitch. And one thing we know about bad bitches is that you can't kill them. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You so know, that's she, right. Even in the jungle, she's, she's like, you know what? I'm going to look for my mom first. Things first. Mm-hmm. Going to look for some food. Going to look for my mom. Realizes um, there's just bodies everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. Um. She she said she looked up in the branch or no. The, there's a guy that led a search party that was interviewed in this this movie that we'll talk about later. But he said when they came upon the crash site and saw the trees that surrounded area the crash site, it was littered with like Christmas presents and wrapping paper and stuff. And yeah. because of all the presents and everything, and it was just like he said it was one of the most crazy thing, scenes ever um oh. which is just the visual of that is horrifying and yeah so sad anyway juliana is looking for her mother but quickly realizes there's no way she's alive after she finds another row of seats with people still in them but their bodies are driven down into the ground this is like oh really God. fucked up sorry yeah. their bodies are driven like two feet down into the ground two three feet into the ground head first Dude, like the the row the whole row of people and their feet are sticking up in the air and oh she's like oh my god those are people are one of them my mom she's like not in her right not, mind no no of course yeah she's in shock like she does and this is like almost twenty four hours later yeah like this is after because she was passed out for like nineteen hours yeah yeah she she was like totally out of it for yeah a long time yeah and you know. Seeing something like this that's so unreal and so traumatizing, yeah. you don't, you're not, you're not processing it, not processing, yeah. So she's uh, when she sees this scene, uh, she realizes one of the the women or the w- woman that she notices that's wearing high heels has yeah. painted toenails, and she's like, that couldn't be my mom. She doesn't, she doesn't paint her nails. So then she realizes, oh my god, okay. Like it, it like kind of snaps her back to reality. Yeah. Like my mom is gone. Also, so people did survive this part. Yeah. So the when people were, you know, search parties later came, they found that people had survived the plane crash. Yeah. But they died of like exposure or you know their injuries whatever. or their injuries yeah, yeah. but um, like there were some other survivors so yeah it, yeah but 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 she just didn't make it out of the needed, rainforest yeah, yeah and she just knew i think you know with her parents being who they were like she just knew that she needed to get a plan together mm-hmm. and get out this fucking place where a giant spider could come eat her or a snake or whatever you know it's like yeah you're not safe here and you don't know if anyone's going to find you. Well, and and she, I think like there was planes flying overhead and mm. they couldn't see the crash site. So right. Because it's a canopy of trees. Yeah. And there was like no scar left in the in the rainforest. Like because oh of the way that the plane just totally broke apart. It wasn't like right. the whole fuselage like took out like a huge swath of trees no. or anything. It was yeah. just like pieces raining down and then swallowed up by the the jungle oh so my God. they couldn't pinpoint where the the, the flight it had gone down Ugh. um anyway so she's like i gotta go i gotta like move i gotta get away from this place like i gotta find civilization like that's yeah. my only hope which i mean i don't know that any anybody i don't know i don't, I don't know how you would make that decision like I feel like I would totally try to stay where the crash site is yeah I don't know 
I, I don't know. It's so crazy that she just had the wherewithal, though, to like be <sighs> like, they, they're not going to find me. I got to I got to get out of here and try to find civilization. I feel like she only thought that because of how comfortable she was in that environment. Totally. And I think she had it. I, I, she was telling a story too about how there was an incident by the, um, the like way station, the conservation, uh, the fucking, what, what you want to call it? Oh the, yeah. The, the fam- research center that yeah, her, yeah. her parents took her to where somebody got lost in the jungle and the way that they found their way out was by following water. Yeah. So she knew from experience that was what you do. Mm-hmm. Um, and like all running of her, water. Running water. That's like yeah. the number one survival tip. If you yeah. get anything out of this From her in today. this situation. Yeah. It's that she had all this survival like knowledge, but she had yeah. no tools. Yeah. She didn't have a machete. She didn't have a lighter. None of that. Um, so she just like was like, all right, first thing I got to do is find some running water. Yeah. So – she uh, because it will empty out in this region mm-hmm. the running water always trails to a bigger body of water and yep. she knew that there would be if there was a bigger body of water like a river or whatever nearby people would be fishing and there would be more traffic and stuff like there was exactly. a better chance that someone would see her so yep. so smart oh, so smart yeah um so she finds a little spring mm-hmm. and she follows that to a creek and she follows that to like a bigger tributary and then eventually to a river and all the while she's traveling down like the path of the water yeah she's dodging fucking stingrays caiman crocodiles piranhas poisonous snakes spiders and the whole time she's being eaten alive by like literally being eaten alive by uh mosquitoes dude like (laughs) Oh, oh miserable oh my god so the whole time I mean, she, does she even notice you know what i mean like there's I know. so much shit going on like i feel like i'd be so out of it i wouldn't even notice yeah i i don't know how and then and this is you know taking several days by the way right she she you know when it's daylight she's following the water the river whatever body of water is is taking her and um at night she like tries to sleep a little bit and then she keeps moving she's just like moving 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 yeah um and the whole time she's either waiting or walking or floating through the water um so she's she like said that like the caiman crocodiles would see her and like dive towards her like try to like fake her out like they're gonna fucking eat her (laughs) and she's just like was like whatever because oh she's God. like probably just so tired and exhausted and out of it. Yeah. And they and she just laid still in the water and they just they never they didn't actually try to bite her or bother her. They were scared of her, right? Like that's why they dived. Un- I don't like- know. Oh, okay. They, I it's like it was she like- didn't she didn't thrash around, so they didn't s- perceive her as like prey. Maybe oh. they thought she was a log or something. Yeah. True. But anyway, so she maybe they she- were just getting a good look from down under. They're like, what is this? Is yeah, this they're like, food or do logs have big. butts? Yeah, <laughs> do logs have butts? <laughs> Not to my knowledge. Yeah. So, um, she said though that the scariest thing that was freaking her out the most was the stingrays, which I did not know about. Um, yeah. In in the river, uh, so she walked with a walking stick the entire time, just yeah. to like you know shuffle Again. and shuffled her so feet smart. on the bottom yeah um because she knew she knew that was a huge hazard anybody else dead yeah you're done <laughs> yeah i don't know there's a fucking stingrays and no anyone yeah the any, amazon rivers anybody else from like a city or not from that part of the world like yeah they're not they're not knowing this they're not knowing that you need to stab the ground as you're walking to mm-hmm. like make sure you fuck up a stingray so it doesn't get you oh my god so she's following the water and meanwhile the cut on her arm that I had mentioned previously mm-hmm. uh, is getting more and more infected and trigger warning just this is really gross oh so get god. ready not as uh, gross as in the video I saw I know oh my god um meanwhile maggots have infested her wound <sighs> like 
there's just maggots in her oh. arm and she's like oh fuck this is not good i mean I, from a lot of stuff that i've read though like it's good like because they eat like the bad flesh necro- necrotic like flesh yeah yeah it's not good but you know it's uh still not great um yeah, yeah, yeah. maggots in your arm um, I guess they're helping you a little bit by potentially fighting off like sepsis or whatever, or like maybe yeah. I like mean the putrid skin or whatever. Like it, yeah, it's not getting into your blood. Like it's not going to poison your blood. But then also there's maggots eating your skin. Fucking maggots are in her arm, and she's oh like, "This God. is not good. I think I'm in trouble more mm-hmm. so than I was before." Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because your body's like growing actual creatures now. Yeah, <laughs> it's not good. She's like, she knows this is like a final stage. And like once the maggots leave, it's like all bets are off. You know, they're going to like, <laughs> you're you're done. You're going to yeah, get yeah, blood yeah. poisoning probably. So oh, oh. she's like, oh, God, I got to find some civilization soon. Um, Again, I wouldn't know that. No. I'd, be, I'd be so fucked up from maggots in my wound. I'll tell you that, but I wouldn't know that this is like a bad sign. I mean, I wouldn't know it's a bad sign, but I wouldn't be able to stand it. Do you know what I mean? I'd be like, no, no. I just lay down and be like, it just the rainforest take me, maggots. Yeah, take maggots, me. I'm yeah, we're all just we're, eat we me. all live I'm, here now. I'm literal worm food right now. Yeah, it's done. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, oh my god. So our girl followed the water until she realized uh, she's at a larger part of her, mm. like a, a, a bigger river she's like okay this has to be a place where it's like opened up and yeah. there's got to be people fishing, like fishing this stretch of the river yeah um and luckily she realized that because she like kind of passed out on the bank because you know that thing of where you're like you your your stomach hurts and yeah. you're like close to home and mm-hmm. you're like and then your bowels like release <laughs> <laughs> yeah like no it's exactly that like sh- it, it's like all, you're holding you're having you're using all the adrenaline to keep mm-hmm. a tight butthole mm-hmm. and then the closer you get to your home the more your body thinks oh good and if anything goes wrong you can't find parking your garage door opener doesn't work you drop your keys one wrong move your brain doesn't know mm-hmm. like it was just it was just using muscle memory to be like, oh, we're exactly this this many seconds away from the toilet. Mm-hmm. And you, you're, that, it's like you're on, you're on a timer, you know. You're on a timer, and yeah. and, and it it's like a it's like a um, double dare challenge or something. It's like anything, any obstacle gets in your way, you're slime in your pants. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, her body was like giving out at this point. Yeah, yeah. And she's and because she like has the realization like I could possibly be close to civilization. Maybe she just like passes out all the the stress releases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She like passes out on the bank of the river. Yeah. But doesn't notice anything because she's so like out of it. Yeah. Um, And when she wakes up several hours later, she's like realizes there's a boat and realizes, oh, there's like a little cabin here on the bank. So she like crawls like oh to the God. into the cabin this like little fishing encampment um and hunkers down and like passes out again and uh and at this point when she finds this like fishing encampment she's been walking on her own after surviving a plane crash in the rainforest for almost 11 days oh my god almost two fucking weeks have gone by at this point, they called off the search for the wreckage of the plane. <gasps> they assume what? that everybody's dead, you know, like oh my God. nobody's expecting to find her alive. Yeah. Um. So she's in this little fishing hut and she's extremely dehydrated, hadn't eaten anything the entire time. Yeah. And she was extremely close to death. Um, oh, my God. But. Eventually, the next day, a fisherman re- fisherman returned to their encampment and found her. Yeah, carried her out of there, gave her food and water, and apparently poured some fucking gasoline on her maggot infested wound to kill oh, all the maggots. My God! Oh, oh my God! And then <laughs> light it on fire because I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> And then, 
Uh, yeah. And then she had to get on another fucking plane to get back to civilization. Oh, worst. That's the worst moment of all this for her, I'm yeah. sure. And Could like, you imagine? I would no. need like decades of trauma therapy before I even got on a fucking plane again. I know. I know. Oh, my God. OK, I want to. <sighs> OK, we like, yes, yeah, she's a bad bitch. But just for a second, I want to talk about her father, who oh, was an no. OG De- Jeff Probst daddy because he was a survivor, <laughs> honey. This That's is where she is. got her tenacity, this is, this. her her fucking like her drive, her her, her innovation. steel will, her yes, her, yes, her. Uh, okay. Truly. So her, her mom father, too was pretty badass. Oh yeah, her mom was badass too, and like a big nerd too, in a you know in a good way, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but like her dad. Okay, so they're German. After World War II, he was like very young. He had no daddy he uh, he no he had no passport no money he was a young like uh biologist Mm -hmm. and he wanted to leave germany and Mm -hmm. he was like okay um i know i can ship my own ass to south america in the cargo of assault like you know ocean freighter yeah 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 like like in the in the like fucking cargo yeah he like made he like made a I don't know I I don't even know the details like of a it. salt I'm igloo like a or something sal- a salt coffin yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't know no yeah he like dug himself into, into a like salt coffin salt. like chunks of salt big yeah. flakes we're talking big flakes these aren't like little, a Maldon yeah like a Maldon these are uh <laughs> these are this isn't uh Morton's because no. that would be everywhere like you no. would suffocate it's got to be big flakes. Mm-hmm. And so he, yeah, he like ships his own ass in a cargo of salt via an ocean freighter, arrives in South America, and then walks the entire way across the continent from where he lands to Peru on fucking foot. Literally, he walked across the entire continent. Dude. Like- <laughs> I like someone really wanted to get somewhere. That's the drive I like to see. That's the ambition. Mm hmm. I mean, I, what do you got to lose, you know? Yeah, You're yeah. Just like live your to life. Get a, trying That's to live living your life. your life. I get, yeah, it's doing something. Oh, my God. That's grabbing life and shaking it and be yeah. like, I'm fucking living. Oh, my God. <laughs> By the salt shaker. Yeah. Shake it like a salt shaker. Shake it like a salt shaker. <laughs> oh, right. my God. Okay. So all this happened. She went into hiding. She yeah. Obviously like, had some fuck. shit to process. Yeah. She's like, yeah. I just want to go and like live a normal life. I don't want anybody to talk to me. I don't want to like do interviews. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to relive this fucking trauma anymore. Fair. I know? wouldn't want to either. I mean, she's probably having to relive it every time she closes her fucking eyes. Yeah. She had. She has dreams. Horrible dreams. She's, yeah. She's traumatized. But yeah. Yeah. Um, But. German filmmaker Werner Herzog, he mm-hmm. a filmmaker, actor, um, documentarian. He really wanted to tell her story. And so he worked with her. She actually um, narrated this story and like went back and kind of like reenacted it for a film called Wings of Hope. This was released in 1998. So she was like in her late 30s. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he... He he narrates the story. He mm-hmm. he's German. She's German. Like there's yeah. like you know this like common thread. But also, he was supposed to be on the flight that dude she and was on. That's why he was so fucking obsessed because he was scheduled to be on the same flight while he was scouting locations for his hill for his film. Ag- Ag- Aguirre. Yeah, Aguirre: The Wrath of God. Yeah, this is like one of his most famous movies, actually. Yeah, one of his first ones, I think. Uh, he did or a few early. more before that. Yeah, it's oh, okay. one of his early films. Like, yeah, yeah, in this from the seventies. This is his like Mark Wahlberg nine eleven story. <laughs> We've all heard that, right? Yeah. Okay, like Mark Wahlberg. Like, supposed I was to be supposed on to be the... on yeah one yeah. of the flights on nine eleven. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he's like, dude, I was supposed to be on that flight. And the only reason he didn't get on this flight because he was booked on it was because he had a connecting flight and that mm-hmm. one got canceled because it was like on the ground for a super long time or something. And so he wasn't going to make it anyway. And so yeah. they just bumped him and put someone else on. <sighs> so he had this like survivor's guilt 
thing going and wanted to um like talk to this woman um and he had like tried to contact julianne for decades and she was actively avoiding the media she didn't ever want to talk about this and finally he was able to locate her with her new married name Mm -hmm. um through the priest that like did his did what do you say that performed (laughs) oh yeah i do funerals Yeah, yeah yeah uh yeah the priest that performed her mother's funeral after this crash yeah um and so then she goes with him she like agrees to it he fucking makes her accompany him on a visit to the site crash which means that she he didn't make her okay she, okay she agreed she to, agreed she, she agreed. agreed to the whole process but you know there's like little flourishes in this film that are like is this necessary and one of them is that he made her sit on the plane like a very similar kind of plane mm-hmm. not the same obviously not the same uh airline because they were they were <laughs> no mas. They, they got put out of business. They were out of biz. Yeah. Um, but made her sit in the same row, same seat. Yeah. Like they're they take off. They're like fly into this place. And he's like, weren't you sitting in row 17? Uh, yeah. So there's so F there, or whatever. Yeah. Like the window seat. It's like, oh, my God. But and she also like she consented to the the whole movie and she had her husband with her to yeah, like yeah, help yeah. her through the process yeah. which was really good but she's like she's just so german you know i know and no like, emotions yeah very like matter of fact and she's like on this flight explaining in detail exactly what she remembers yeah. and yeah can you fucking imagine like no. reliving that <laughs> Okay, uh, no, I was thinking like, oh, my God, I would be such a mess. But then I was thinking, no, you have to car- compartmentalize this stuff because otherwise you will never live the rest of your life. Mm-mm. You you can't. It would yeah. be completely Im- impossible if all you ever thought about was like I survived a plane crash or yeah. like you just dis- you'd self-destruct in through drugs, alcohol, whatever, uh, uh, sex, food, whatever, like addiction you develop from the yeah. trauma of that. Yeah. Or you like learn to kind of compartmentalize it. You work through it as best you can. And then you like fucking turn it off. Because yeah. how else are you going to live your life? I know. I cannot like. No. And, you know, you you your brain, though, does some pretty incredible things to help your yeah. help you survive. Like, which is why, you know, you, you go into shock, which is why you yeah. have you black out like yeah. certain things. You just mm-hmm. your brain selectively only remembers certain bits and pieces of traumatic incidents so I bet that 11 days for her felt like like a day Mm. you know what I mean like somehow I mean I don't know if that's true but you know like time is time is weird when you're yeah like time is weird in that moment and Mm -hmm. she wasn't sleeping she she wasn't eating it's like she was totally tripped out the whole time like yeah it's it's just totally totally strung out yeah Mm. So, okay, yeah, he didn't make her, but, um, okay, but this was wild, and he tells her this, and it's like, uh, he's like, did you know this? And this goes back to the dad warning the mom. Don't take this this shit-ass airline, Lanza. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Herzog tells Julianne, um, something that she did not know before the crash, but she definitely learned firsthand after. And that is Lanza Airlines straight up garbage. I wrote this down. I think their um, tagline was um, Lanza. Do I Lanza plane here? Or Lanza (laughs) plane? In this mountain? (laughs) There. Do I have to Lanza plane at any point or just crash it into the ground? Fly Uh, with us and you'll be saying, oh, my Lanza. Oh my god, okay. Oh, it's so fucked up. I'm so sorry. R.I.P. Uh, to all the poor people that have died on these flights. Ugh. We'll beat other competitor prices by a landslide. <laughs> and you'll also die in one. Oh my god. Oh. So no bad. disrespect, no disrespect, but no. god damn, oh this my. airline was so bad. It's so bad. So bad. Yeah, this airline was fucking... And all these people are just trying to get the cheapest ticket, okay? Like, this is capitalism. It's like the Spirit Airlines, but if Spirit Airlines just crashed all the time. Oh, like, yeah. 
Oh, no. I think it's like if Spirit Airlines, but if Spirit Airlines just gave up completely. Yeah. Like, this is Spirit Airlines zero fucks. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like Spirit Airlines. They just forget the P. <laughs> Pirate Airlines. I don't know. Pirate <laughs> Airlines. Rit <laughs> Airlines. We can't afford the S and the P anymore. <laughs> Oh, my God. Spit Airlines. Spit no Airlines. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. So uh, Aaron already mentioned this, but prior to Lanza Flight 508 crashing, Lanza had a history of incidents. In 1966, Lanza Flight 501 crashed into the side of a mountain, killing all 49 passengers and the entire crew. That was bad. And then they were like, okay, maybe we should learn from this. And they didn't. And then in 1970... Lance of Flight 502, sensing a pattern, carrying allegedly 92 passengers and eight crew, mm. uh, crashed. And a, ve- a-, a one person ended up surviving, uh, a- like, out-, out of everyone. There were initially survivors like this other crash, mm-hmm. but, like, um, everybody eventually perished. But, okay, this is the fucked up thing that he tells her, which I found so fascinating and, like, probably why this you know this airline got shut down uh, days after this crash so or no they didn't get shut down days after this crash because then she crashed in her in 508 so but it's all adding up okay people but are starting they to did notice. shut down i think they like, did it down. took them two weeks to get shut down yeah. after her after yeah. her crash yeah 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 um okay but in 1970 launch of flight 502 it crashed. It was allegedly carrying 92 passengers and eight crew. And that's the capacity for the type of plane they were on was 100 mm-hmm. people. But Herzog said, and I tried to confirm this online, but there's just like not very good information. And mm-hmm. I feel like he probably does his research. So I'm just going to like cite his documentary. Um, he said there were over 100 people on the flight. And that all you need to know from that is that they – not they like didn't just overbook this flight they like overfilled it yeah they put there were like, more extra bodies yeah. yeah there were more bodies than there were places for people it's like they ha- didn't like the the crew didn't sit in their jump seats or something and yeah. just had passengers in the yeah, jump seats sit or in their jump like seats and they're like we'll just stand the whole time they're like whatever it's fine Ooh, dude Lord. that's the least of it apparently also according to herzog uh they the mechanics that they hired to service these planes yeah uh were goddamn motorcycle mechanics Dude. they weren't even like specialized aerospace mechanics they were just like hey uh my uncle joe works in a garage <laughs> can we just like get him to fix the plane like oh my god and then on top of that Most, if not all, of their pilots were unlicensed to fly commercial flights. Like, maybe they knew how to fly a fucking (laughs) Cessna, but not a commercial airline. They're like, I go down to the beach every weekend and I fly my little, uh, my little remote control plane. Probably the same, right? I can do it, right? Yeah. No. On the one hand, I'm like the gall of these men obviously who were men at the time because women like couldn't even have credit cards um <laughs> but like the men taking pilot jobs without a license for this airline the gall and the mechanics who've never worked on planes before being like i can do that there wasn't even fucking youtube back then to be like oh i watched it and figured it out it's like no you just don't know how to do it but also it's not their fault people need to make a living you know what i mean the airline should have been like <sighs> Maybe this is a bad fucking idea. I mean, it's shocking that more shit didn't happen. I mean, these three incidents in and of themselves are horrifying. (laughs) I'm just saying it's it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a miracle that every single plane that they had didn't fucking fall out of the sky all the time. Like Um, the wings weren't just falling off, and yeah, the windows. No, I mean we know what happens when you use a fucking screw on a wind windscreen. That's like yeah, too, too small, millimeters too short. Yeah, the fucking windshield will pop off. We, that's an episode that we did a few. And it'll leave the pilot topless and hanging out the window, and that's not a good look for anyone. No, um, so this this is not a job 
like being a pilot for a commercial airline is not a job where you fake it till you no. make it. No, this absolutely is not. not a hobby. This is not a weekend gig. This is not an entry level position. This is not a place you intern at. Yeah, it's a fucking life and death situation to be a commercial airline pilot. You Dude. have to have years and years of experience. So these people were just like. I fly on the weekends at and just like have like a little plane. It's so fun. It's totally uh, fine. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Oh my god. So it's it's um it's crazy. This whole story is absolutely insane. I I'm in awe of this living legend. Uh, yes. she is Julianne Kopke. Kopke is she's still alive and um she's also a biologist now she's a she specializes in uh bats she does bat research in Good for her. the amazon <laughs> yeah no I, bats are so cute though oh no, no i'm deathly no. afraid of them but i god i just love their little faces oh. um, Pass. and she just like what and i just want to say go watch the documentary um wings of hope by Werner yeah. Herzog. Yeah. He is I love him so much. He's so wonderful. And this documentary is just it really is a reaction though to him not only being like dodging a bullet, yeah. but also um there was a couple there was a, a Italian movie made that was so terrible and oh, so offensive. Yes. Um that I think it was the re- one of the main reasons Juliana uh, agreed to tell her own story with Werner Herzog is because it was so offensive to her. Yeah. Basically, they just like portrayed her as this like teenage girl that was yeah. like, scared of everything and like screaming. a bumbling idiot. Yeah. yeah. And she's like it like and she like clowns on it in the movie in the in Wings Meanwhile, of Hope. she's like fucking Rambo, dude, going through exactly. That yeah. Rambo. <laughs> Rambo could never, okay? Rambo could never. He couldn't float down a river serenely and yeah, like not give a fuck about caimans and piranhas, like no. nipping at his butt cheeks, he'd, okay? He'd be like, trying to kill everything all aggressive yeah. and then he'd get killed. So well, he, wouldn't, Rambo, he wouldn't even know how. Rambo still needs a fucking machete to like be anything, yeah. so yeah, whatever. Oh She's God. just like chilling and being one with nature and surviving yeah. and being a badass and like the pictures of her coming out of the fucking rainforest almost dying she looks so good <laughs> I was, like I hate that like I like I noticed that but I was like oh, she still looks so cute oh my god well she was 17 I she know. had youth on her side but we yeah. know she just survived because she's a bad bitch it's fine that's right she's a bad yeah. bitch yeah I'm a bad bitch you can't kill me <laughs> That's what she said the whole time she was floating down the river. Oh, my God. All right, you guys. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, mm-hmm. Read more about it if you want to. There's yeah. all kinds. There are all kinds of stories about people surviving plane crashes that oh my we God. talk about, too. Yeah, we will. Yeah. Um. Also, go like this is great fodder for your like office, you know, kitchen or whatever. Next time you see someone in there and then when you tell them and they're like, whoa, where'd you hear about that? You plug our pod. There you go. Plug there the you pod. Go. Plug the pod. Plug the yeah. pod. Um, leave us a review on whatever you platform you listen. Yeah. It'd be cool if you did. Yeah. That way more people could find us. Yeah. Um, yeah. And go to our website. It's dtfupodcast.com. Shoot us a note. You could leave us um, like a story that comes to our email. You can um, send us an episode topic. You can buy merch on our website. You can watch our videos on. We record these on YouTube. Mm-hmm. All every episode um, on and YouTube. Spotify and Spotify. You could watch us on Spotify. Mm-hmm. Not just listen, watch us. Um, wow. Yeah. It's uh, just us being very cutting edge, <laughs> you know. Serving, just always serving. No looks. looks. <laughs> no looks, just us. Just us, just serving mm. it. Just serving it, absolutely nothing. 
<laughs> hope you're hungry for nothing. For nothing. <laughs> hope you're hungry for crumbs because that's all I'm serving. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> she is giving nothing. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, thank you guys. Uh, yeah. Stay excellent to yourselves and each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>